Hey, what's going on? Thanks a lot for joining me. We're going to talk about what is white label software in this video, and I'm going to tell you all about it. And hopefully you'll leave in just a minute with all the information you need to decide whether you want to sell white label software, knowing what it is, and even how you can make money with it. So let's dive in, okay? So first, let's start off with what is white label, okay? Well, in some cases, it's like software, and that's typically what the phrase white label is associated with, is software. It's when developers decide to build something, like an app or a piece of software that's in the cloud or on the desktop or whatever. They decide to build it, and then in addition to selling it themselves, they also decide to sell a license to it that basically allows people like you and I to white label the software and sell it as their own brand. So that's where the phrase white label comes from, is basically they remove their branding from it, whatever they've built, software or whatever, and then you can basically insert your branding into it. And sell it as your own okay so that's what that means now why on earth would they want to do that they've gone to all this trouble to build something and like why on earth would you give it away and let somebody else put their brand on it there's a couple of good reasons okay so for one thing and these all sort of lead down to the bottom bullet point but for one thing when you white label something it's just an extra revenue source very often Okay, so usually the developers, the people who are behind creating the product in the first place are already selling it, or they have sold it for a while in the past. They know it sells, and certainly when you're looking at white label stuff, it's a good idea to make sure that you're checking something out, or if you're going to buy it, making sure you're getting something that's actually been sold in the marketplace before and proven to work. But... Another reason that beyond just expanding their revenue is they can expand their reach with the software, right? So even with their own marketing and, and sales and stuff, there's a limit to just how big they can get without increasing the size of their sales team and maybe changing the structure of their organization and stuff like that. And, you know, very often that's just that's stuff that they're not super interested in doing. They may like developing products, and that's kind of their core business model. And so when they white label it, then that gives them a chance to basically push the software out to other people who can basically take on all of those marketing and sales tasks. And it lets them, which gets us to our third bullet point here, focus on the product development the product support and the stuff that they love and what they got into it all for in the first place. Okay, so that last bullet point, outsourcing sales, is really like the icing on the cake. So like they can really push it out a long ways and build a huge brand for themselves and really by sharing the revenue essentially by white labeling the product that enables them to grow in a way that they can't grow without adding to their organization like I was talking about before. Okay, so what all can be white labeled? Well, I alluded to this at the beginning, but it's not always just software. Okay, the phrase white label tends to be associated with software, but technically all it means is selling the rights the license to someone else to offer the service, offer the product with their own branding on it, okay? And so anything can technically be white labeled. And that includes cloud software. That is probably the most typical thing. Desktop software doesn't have to just be software as a service and cloud stuff. People have been white labeling software for a long time, so long before cloud stuff came along. So you can still find software 
that is just installation only on people's desktops. They have to download it and, and install it, and you can white label it. Okay, there's still software out there like that, apps. So for your phone, you know, those are, there, there are people who white label apps, and you can sell those as your own. Even books and documents and images and stuff like that, okay? Collections of images, for example, are things that you can sort of co-brand or white label or sell as your own if you've bought the right license from the vendor, okay? So those are different things. And then lastly, even services, okay? So you think about what a lot of people do even today. Maybe you've done it before. They arbitrage stuff where a business provider needs, for example, some sweatshirts created or some marketing materials, signs for an event that they're going to. And they go to another business locally who uh, offer to do that design work and create those signs. Well, very often those signage companies and stuff are working with someone else who actually fulfills all of that service. Okay, so like creating those signs, maybe even designing the stuff, they just are the middleman. And that is essentially like white labeling, right? So even your local designer can be very often somebody that you're working with and they're actually farming out the, the actual work to someone else to get done on their behalf. Okay, and then they bring it back, they charge you one price, they pay this other person a price and get to charge and hopefully make a profit in the middle. So this is something that's been going on a long time. It's not anything to worry about if you're thinking about, oh, I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do. It's just, as we'll talk about in a minute, it's all in the value that you add to the equation. Okay, so let's get into the next slide. All right, so where do you find white label that you can sell? So that's a great question. And frankly, the first place I would tell you to look is just at the tools and software and stuff that you already use, okay? Because you'd be surprised how often, if you dig around enough on their website, you may even have to reach out and contact the support, but you may find that they offer an option for agencies or businesses to resell their services under their own brand okay and so i encourage you to look there be, look there because it's like if you're already using it and you're familiar with it and you understand the value of let's say your email marketing software that you use then that covers so many bases right like you already have a natural sort of ability to talk about it and you know how to use it and it would just make it that much easier for you to go out and sell it right and that's really the concept behind this white labeling i'm thinking while you're looking into this is because you're looking for an opportunity or an idea of hey i want to sell something but i don't necessarily want to create it myself so that white labeling concept would save me a ton of time i think and yeah you're right it's just finding quality stuff that you know how to sell. Okay, so start with your favorite tools. Other places that you can find stuff are on marketplaces like Warrior Plus and JVZoo. Now, those don't always have the best reputation for some of the software they sell. And frankly, a lot of the, the white label or private label rights stuff that gets sold there is of good quality now, but it's not always kept up into the future and stuff like that. It tends to be very trendy and stuff like that, which is okay because it's generally priced accordingly. Okay, so, you know, if you understand that going in, then you may be able to sort of get your feet wet with white labeling something without spending a lot. And you just have to, on the flip side, understand that it may not be a super long-term business model for you. You may have to find other products and sort of find yourself starting over again with a different prod every year or something like that as stuff gets outdated and, and isn't as well supported there. So, But there are plenty of things there, and especially like on Warrior Plus, they sell a lot of those books and videos and stuff like that that are white labeled that you can turn around and sell as like courses, 
that kind of thing. Okay. Think about what you want to sell that's also something that someone else needs. That's my last bullet point there. And it's like, just because something is being offered with a white label license doesn't mean that anybody cares about it or that anybody will ever buy it. So if you're going to spend the money on getting the white label license to something, then at least make it something that you know somebody else is going to want. And if you're not 100% sure, like maybe you don't have a lot of ways to do market research on this or that kind of thing. Well, if it seems like something that you would want, then that's a start, right? And if you're able to look at the sales numbers and see that, yeah, it seems like quite a few other people are buying this same thing and they're buying the white label rights. And so that kind of gives you an idea that maybe there's some demand there, but you can just check that stuff against what's trending, what that's like common sense. Like, hey, if I'm going to white label this software, is it like, is it something that small businesses really could use? Think about from your own experience with running a business or being involved in a business as an employee. Would you have wanted to use this? Could you have sold people in your business on this thing? And yeah, the answer is yes, then. Cool. Okay. Quick item here is just as we're looking around the internet at stuff that's white label that you can sell, it may come under different terms, right? So like I said, white label tends to be associated with software. Private label rights tends to be associated with books, video courses, stuff like that. Resell rights, well, that's just another phrase that usually is associated with the private label rights content, where it's like books and courses and stuff, where with resell rights, you're allowed to go and actually not only sell it as your own product, but you can also sell the rights again to this thing. So that's <laughs> it's multiple layers there. So hopefully you're sticking with me as we go through that. And then the last thing that sometimes comes up as terminology in this field is co-branding. Okay, so it tends to be the same thing, but sometimes you'll find that a vendor is selling a piece of software or a document or a book or something like that. And for a fee, they're giving you the opportunity to put your name alongside of theirs, which could also be a good thing. If they've got some influence and recognition and stuff, then that automatically sort of up levels you with them and helps add some of that authority and that kind of thing to the product that you're selling. So those are all different ways that it's described, but it all sort of comes back to the same thing. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty because if you're thinking about what is high, what is white label stuff, then you're probably wondering like, how do you sell it? How do you make profits with it? And that kind of thing. And so that's what this slide is all about. Listen, the way you sell white label stuff is no different than the way you would sell your own products, right? All that white label does is cut the gap between where you are now, maybe, and where you want to be in terms of your business and having something to sell. Okay, so it shortcuts you to that point where you have something to sell, but it doesn't sell it for you, right? There's still this last mile where you have to do your marketing, you have to be creating organic content. If that's one of the paths that you decide to go on, you've got to leverage your influence or build your reputation up and do all the same things that you would have to do if you were starting a business, right? It saves you a ton of work and a ton of investment and headache, but there's still a lot to it to get the final product that you've white labeled sold so that you can become profitable. And one of the ways that you can do that is by, because very often like with white label stuff, especially with software, it's, it's very generalized, right? So for example, you may be a marketing agency or a web design company or something like that. And the people who are white labeling products and services to you in that space, they don't care what sort of vertical you're in, right? Like they'll sell to any agency. 
But then you, as the agency who were adopting this white label software, who are paying for it, you want to, like one of the ways that you can succeed with selling it is by niching down, right? So if you've got something that helps you create websites and you're white labeling this software and you want to sell it, well, instead of trying to sell it to everyone, then this is where you can say, oh, I've actually got some experience selling to florists. Like I've done a couple of florist websites on gardeners or whatever the niche may be, right? Lawyers, dentists, chiropractors, there's all sorts of different niches, right? But if you can take this white label software and say, oh, okay, now I'm going to brand this thing that is just pretty generic and I'm going to make it into the number one florist web design software available, right? And then you just go market to florists. So now you've got something which is giving you what they call like a blue ocean. There's blue ocean, red ocean. Red ocean is where there's tons of competition and lots of fighting going on, lots of blood in the water. Blue ocean is where you've taken maybe the same thing that everybody in the ocean is selling. You've just gone into a little spot over here where there's not so much fighting and competition and it allows you to really just focus in and help some people out and make some money in the process. Okay. Niching down. Now, the other thing that you can do and, and almost always have to do, right? Because it is value add is adding value to whatever it is that you're white labeling. Okay. Because if you're just going to sell the exact same white label software that the company that developed it provides and that multiple other vendors like yourself who bought white label rights, everybody's selling the same thing, then it just kind of gets watered down. And then how can you compete? Well, you can be in a niche, right? And then you can compete on price, but that's not the way to make money. Eventually some of those florists may say, oh, well, I saw this business, I can get the same thing, or maybe I can even get it cheaper over here. It looks like it's exactly the same software. Why wouldn't I do that? Because they can be con price conscious, right? Well, the way that you solidify your blue ocean and really make this something special is by niching down, but then also adding value. And the way that you do that, there's a couple of things listed here that are ideas. Maybe you do white glove service where you just take care of all the setup for the business. Maybe you're doing a lot of extra training. Maybe you're there to help them from a support standpoint. Maybe you do a bunch of extra design stuff, or maybe, for example, if it's like a email automation software, maybe you've already created a series of 10 or 20 or 30 emails that are just specific to like the holidays that are really popular for florists. And not only when they get this software, are they going to have this great automation tool, but you're also giving them these emails that you've had professionally created that are ready to go. And you're going to set them up with the business's name and it's going to save them a ton of time and bring in business. So those are ways that you can take what you've white labeled and add your own personal special sauce to it so that it's extra valuable to them. And when you do that, then there's really no limit to how much you can charge. Like your offer becomes equivalent to the software, which is just a tool plus your value add your extras, which really have sort of an infinite pricing model right? It just depends on how much you're going to give them in addition. And so those are ways that you can sell white label. All right. Now, how do you make money when you're doing white label? Well, you take those things that I was just talking about, like maybe being niche specific, adding value in different ways. And, you know, that stuff makes sense to you, but you're kind of thinking, okay, how does this white label business even work in the first place? Like, do I have to pay a certain percentage to the vendor every time I make a sale? Or 
how does that work? Is it just a one-time fee? Does it cost millions of dollars? Well, the answer is like yes and no at the same time, okay? Every one who offers white label stuff has their own recipe as to how they're going to offer it. So I know I was just looking into a software the other day and it was in the accessibility line of software and essentially every vendor in that space that's worth a darn is doing the same model where they just sell you the software at a 20% discount. Okay. As a re so you can basically become a revendor for them and white label the little stuff that ends up going on people's websites and have your brand on there, but you really can't charge what I mean, theoretically you can charge whatever you want, but it would be silly to charge anything less than the price that they're offering it for. And in fact, you would have to sell it for more because there's really not a lot of margin there, especially when you factor in the cost of advertising and stuff. So that's one business model. Now, the model we're looking at on this slide is one where we say, oh, okay, this software, and so this is something you have to investigate. Like, I don't personally like that model where you just become a revendor. I like to pay one fee and then be able to take it from there and charge what I want to charge within the terms and regulations that are provided by the business and uh, go from there, like run it as my business. Like whatever I bring in is going to be toward my revenue and profit goals. Okay. And that's what we're looking at here. So pretend we white label a software that helps small businesses with their marketing efforts and it's $997 a month. All right. Well, how do you make money? The first thing I had to do is you pay your $9.97 a month, okay? And now I've got it. Now I've got to white label everything, get my branding in there, set up my website, and now I go out and start marketing and bringing in new clients. Imagining I'm selling to florists in that vertical and I've got this cool value add and stuff like that. Well, what I'm going to do is sell them this software plus these emails like we were talking about, and I'm going to sell it to them for $500 a month. 497 a month. Okay, I'm just making these up, but you can see now how you make money in this space is okay, my first two clients essentially pay my monthly fee, right? And then after that, everything I sell is profit to me as far as this business. Of course, there's advertising and other marketing costs and employee costs and stuff like that for me, but just keeping it really simplified. This is how you make money with white label, right? So you're looking for opportunities where you can pay one fee and then you're going to maybe sell multiple versions of this thing and sell it to lots of people and that's how you're gonna get profitable or you're going to add a lot of value and maybe you're only looking for two or three customers and so instead of charging 500 a month, Maybe you're adding so much value that you can charge $1,500 a month. So your first client makes you profitable. Now, those are the things that you can work through in white label, but that's how you make money with it. That's the idea. You're paying over here. You're paying your business has one fee to have the software and the product. And then over here, you're charging your customers, the people that you bring in, something else. And either you've got to like in this case, bring in three customers to get profitable, or you're adding so much value and stuff that even after your first customer, you can start to be profitable. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now, what white label do I sell? Well, I sell one that is designed for the small businesses. It's a marketing automation software, and what it does is it consolidates tons of different services that a typical small business needs for marketing. It helps them improve profits. And this is one of the things that I add value with is I come in and like I was talking about with emails and automations and stuff, like I do a bunch of stuff to help the business not only just adopt the software, but make more money with it and have a better lifestyle and have a better smoother running business, simplify things for them. Okay, so 
those are my value adds and that's what I sell. And essentially what this software has is like all kinds of stuff that typically software or small businesses pay tons of money for and they've got like 15 different subscriptions and it's complicated. All right, so text marketing, SMS marketing, having a marketing phone number, reputation management, having call a calendar booking system, email marketing, having a customer relationship management tool. So keeping track of all of those things is something which, I mean, if you think about it, if you're familiar with a company called Zapier and Zaps, their whole business was designed within the last however long they've been around, let's say 10 years, their business is designed to connect all of these different services because ridiculously, small businesses and, and the way that software development has gone over the last 10 or 20 years, is like these are all different services from different businesses. And it's like they all have to be connected in some way to make sense of it. If you're gonna have phone calls coming in, doesn't it make sense to have that wired up to your customer relationship management? Or if you're gonna have people signing up for your newsletter and your website, doesn't that make sense to have it go into your customer relationship management and into your funnels and getting emails? And so Zapier honestly just wires this all. Let, let's look at the next slide. It wires it all together, right? It's been a huge mess. And so the software I sell actually consolidates all of that stuff and it just simplifies things and it makes so much sense. So going back to that earlier slide where I was talking about, what do you want a white label? It's like white label is something that someone else wants to buy, right? And so this to me, being a business person, having helped lots of businesses with marketing and stuff, I just, I see this and it's, oh my God, like people need this. And so this, this image I think helps really illustrate the conundrum that so many small businesses are in is like how to wire all this stuff together. Well, often they don't. Like a small business owner doesn't want to deal with Sapir. And if they don't have someone hired to do that for them, then honestly, these things are all just disconnected for the most part, right? And so what they do is they like duplicate effort and they move stuff around. Or a lot of small businesses just say, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to have a website and I'm going to have a phone and maybe I'll send out an email newsletter. Maybe I won't. No. And I'm just going to have some sort of payment system and that's it. I'll just forego all of this other stuff because it's just too complicated to make it all work together. And I don't want to deal with it. I don't have time to deal with it. And so, of course, lots of small businesses say that and who can blame them, right? Okay, what's great is by selling this software, I get to help small businesses and earn a living at the same time. So that's like a big win, right? It's a win-win for everyone. And that's something that I was looking for in White Label and you should be too, right? Because if you really wanna succeed with it, then you really want the people who are buying it from you to succeed with it. And that's the ultimate goal. So. That is what I've decided to do. Listen, check it out for yourself. I put a link right below this video. There may be a button, it may just be a link, I don't know. But click it, you can check it out for yourself, this software that I sell, and see all the cool stuff that it has. It's pretty amazing. If that kind of thing interests you and helping small businesses with marketing is something that you've either wanted to get into or have some experience with from the past, then you'll probably look at this and be like, this is a huge no-brainer. Like, I've got to do this because it just shortcuts so much for small businesses and helps them out so much. And if that's what you decide, then more power to you. I am totally here to help you anytime. And if you don't decide to check it out, if this kind of business model isn't for you, that's totally cool too. There's lots of white label and private label rights opportunities out there. And I encourage you to check them out and find something that is going to work for you. So listen, hope you found this helpful and I appreciate your joining me. I'll talk to you next time.